He's on, he's on. Okay, that's a big fish, dude. Yeah. Woo! That is awesome. Now you go, boy. Now Hunting Hawaii has been on my hunting to-do list for many years, and in two days, my friend Remy will be here with me to do just that. But it'd be a damn shame to ignore the fact this place is surrounded 360 degrees by an ocean teeming with sea life, opportunity, and adventure. Hawaii is equally, if not more interesting, underwater as it is above, and I intend to have a look. To have a look, I'm going to need some help. So my buddy Robin has linked me up with his friends Sean and Brian, who have generously offered to indoctrinate me into the world of free diving and offshore fishing. Day one, Sean has us cruising to a remote part of the island where he secured access to a secluded beach void of pesky tourists, of which I assuredly am. Sean is an amazingly accomplished hunter. Born and raised on the island, its isolation has not hampered his hunting prowess or success on species found other places like elk, moose, and caribou, to name a few. When it comes to the island's outdoor pursuits, he's a master. This includes free dive spearfishing, an activity I'll be attempting for the first time. So we'll have the three prong, which is this, which we'll you know try and shoot the, the, uh, the reef fish with, uh -huh. and then we'll have the gun that we can try and shoot the uh, the jacks and the uh, parrot fish and stuff like that with the bigger size fish. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because they'll just rip off the three prongs and probably you won't even get close enough with the three prongs. So the, the gun, you can kind of reach out and touch it. Like what's your, further. like what's the range with the gun? Then? Probably about like 15 feet. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's actually further than I thought. Yeah, yeah, 10 to 15 feet or so. Sweet dude, well, I'm pumped. Like this is, I've never done this before, so, but I've like, I see it, you know, and I'm like, oh, it looks so cool. Um, so yeah, just excited to give it a try. Cool. So I'm pumped, man. Let's do it. Right on. We get our feet oh, wet, literally, by prying a few opihi off the rocks with a very specialized tool, the butter knife. A surprise attack is essential. If you miss your mark and give them time to react to your disturbance, they cement themselves to the rock. If this happens, your best recourse is to find another one. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, he's fast. Yeah, he knows. He sensed it. Yeah. And if he's being too stubborn, all good. Yeah, I'll leave them alone. Okay. <laughs> I learned a very basic lesson during our Opihi escapade. Never turn your back on the ocean. I'm already bleeding, and we haven't even started swimming yet. After a quick briefing from Sean, I jump in with both flippers, flail around a bit, get water in my mask, drink some ocean, and eventually get situated to a point where I can relax and look for fish. Our primary target, Cola, the dark purple fish with yellow around the eye. They are apparently delicious. Amongst the gear I borrowed from Sean, a three-pronged spear. This style of spear is common, relatively simple to operate by pulling the staff rearward, tensioning the attached surgical tubing with a half twist to prevent bending the staff, and then holding the spear until ready to release at your quarry. It's ideal for small fish and quick reloads after missing, something I manage to do a lot. Sean makes it look easy, spearing fish on nearly every dive and even manages two at once. Eventually, I see one below and kick down the deepest I've gone thus far. After a couple hours, the ocean takes its toll. I get tired and I pull myself onto the rocks with the majesty of an uncoordinated walrus. Sean isn't done and fins his way out of the kiddie pool and around the corner to pursue bigger fish. He returns with a full stringer, a jack and goat fish amongst others. I've spent my life hunting and fishing. Spear fishing is a hybrid of both that takes place on what may as well be another planet. It's addicting and I'll be back to do it again. Right on, you too, man. Up at 12 a.m., we're off to meet famed chef Brian Etheridge and his boat captain Chimo at the boat ramp. Not only is Brian the culinary equivalent to Gary Payton of the basketball world, yes, that's a random Seattle Supersonics basketball reference, he's the owner of the boat we are fishing on, a boat he worked on for two years, getting it ready to be an integral part of the meals he creates. How so? Fish procurement is an A to Z process for Brian. The fish brought aboard the boat are dispatched, bled, cooled, and served fresh in the dishes he prepares for clients. We have a six hour run to get to the state buoy by daylight. Fish love structure. 
buoys I find out on the boat are essentially just that, something the wide open ocean lacks. All right, Brian, we're underway. It's zero dark 30. What's, uh, what's the game plan today? Uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go about 50 miles, uh, leaving out of the south shore of Maui. Gonna cruise past Lanai, go to a couple state buoys out there that we heard that there's some ahis, and uh, hopefully fill up this 2,000 pound fish box right here. I like that plan as well. Yeah. I mean, well, we got like a variety of gear here, like yeah. some I'd say more conventional, and then we got the big dogs back yeah. here too. Like what's what's going on here? So there's gonna be different times, times a day. We don't know when we show up, where the fish are gonna be. Meaning, um, have they been eating all night? It's been a little bit full of a moon. It just is setting right now. So right. Um, all these things come into play and this really de de depends on what kind of gear we're gonna use. If they're feeding and they're exploding all over the top of the, the water and we can't keep bait in the water fast enough, we're gonna run the electrics so that we're just constantly taking care of the fish, dropping it back and letting the reels, uh, the electric reels bring the fish up to us. Gotcha. If they're a little bit more finicky or even after we've caught, you know, I don't know, hopefully a thousand pounds, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a good Whatever, target Whatever, you know, but what, sometimes you can sting the school and then they're gonna slow down their bite. And then we're gonna go down and we're gonna start doing a little bit more finesse, kind of like going from gun hunting to bow hunting. Okay, right, At right. that point, right? Yeah, yeah. And then we're gonna start using smaller line. You know, this is some fluorocarbon, so they can't see it. And then we can use some, uh, we didn't get any live bait tonight just because we're all a little bit busy. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have some nice dead bait so we can float those back. Yeah. And um, so really we start with a hammer and then end with a fine needle. I like it. Yeah, I like it. It's a fairly big water day. Before we get to the buoy, the seas have already claimed Mike's soul. Mike, are you surviving or thriving? I am, uh, I am dying. <laughs> okay, he's not actually dead. He just feels like it. Coop will be filming solo on this one. It just doesn't feel like it right now. Shimo and Brian are expert anglers. I've never used electric reels before, but it doesn't take long to see them in action. Once hooked, the landing is a somewhat mechanized affair, and fish are brought in with shocking efficiency. Okay. Okay. Brian asked me if I'd like to try my hand at conventional tackle, something I'm more familiar with, and I jump at the chance. We hook up an ahi, and before I can budge him, he's eaten by a shark and cuts off our gear. We repeat the process one more time before reverting back to the electric. We're done feeding right sharks right for the day, oh, right in which the waters are teeming. Oh, yeah. They he's even chase in. fish brought in with the comparatively warped speed of the electric reels. For me, the highlight of the day is handlining for mahis, something I didn't even know was a thing until Chimo casually began to hoist fish you over the gun. You bigger fish, did you? Yeah, right? You weren't, you weren't okay with that three pound <laughs> Nice one, dude. When it's time to head back, we have a handful of ahis, a giant rainbow runner, the second biggest the guys have seen, and several mahis in the box. Speaking of boxes, in total, I checked five for fish species I hadn't previously caught. Hawaii's waters did not disappoint.